With the Japanese bridge I've added a bit of dark here behind this brighter paintwork on the bridge and I've started to work a little bit into the negative shapes in the um, gaps and the shadows behind foliage but I'm going to leave quite a lot of it um, wet into wet as it is let's have a look at an idea for painting shadow underneath these um, wisteria, the lilac wisteria you see a little bit of shadow or darkness cast on the branches and the stems behind the trailing flowers something like that so with a soft brush just trying to create a slightly harder edge against the, the plant, against the blossom flowering wisteria and a softer edge going away from that just a little bit of water on the brush The most difficult thing to do, I think, when you're reading something like this is to avoid or to achieve an irregular uh, pattern or form with these gaps. Try and catch that before it dries. And avoid too much brushing around that because it will undo what colour there is already there. So shadow is present on the structure supporting the wisteria. So a little bit of blue sky there. Some of this uh, distant foliage is a little too bright for a distant mid-distance 
areas of mid distance uh, we would have less contrast and be a little bit um, cooler visually towards more of a slightly more of a duller green or a um, blue green so I can sort of repeat the lost and find on top by either damping the surface or losing the edges try and get this hanging wisteria to come forward a little bit Isolate that area of sky. Take a damp brush and just pinch the edge of that. If there's more water then there's likely to be granulation of colour which is another useful uh, surface quality in watercolour. Well, that's all a little bit further away which means there should be less difference between light and dark back there uh, and all of that should help to throw the um, wisteria forwards a little bit push it out from the background let's have a look at that Further away. So one of the big areas of division in this subject is the difference between water and not water, or what's above the pond or the river and what's below. And to separate that I would put a glaze of um, Pale blue ultramarine, a little bit of violet perhaps, violet blue. Um, this is ultramarine with mixed with a little bit of um, permanent rose. So a glaze, the idea of a glaze would be just to go over this once only with a natural fiber brush if possible and try and reduce the um, contrast in the surface of water. I'm just going to leave out a few of these uh, floating I think they're, they're um, blossom leaves that have fallen into the water, tend to make flattish marks like that. Petals rather, permanent rose ultramarine. 
violet blue so that's going to go all the way across here up to the water level with a few gaps, a few little bits of light hitting the water Keep recharging the brush. I'll try and avoid working back into areas that are wet. It's a little difficult to separate what is reflection over here on the right and what is um, light of the water. I'd have to put this colour down first and then return to that when it's dry. So I let that dry and there's a little more to do over there. And it's nearly, I think, time to leave it alone. <laughs>